Well, I mean, you, you do have to pay to go yeah. to Toe's Beach. So it's probably $5 unless, a car. Unless you're Town of Oyster Bay and you go to Toe Bay Beach. Toe Bay Beach? Town of Oyster Bay Beach. Oh, cute. Never been there. Have you? What? Yes. Really? What I'm, a, I'm a resident of Oyster Bay. Can you tell me what the hell is the difference between all these beaches? It's sand and water. Why, if you find one beach, why do you need to go to another? Especially if it's the same ocean, same, no, same it's state. It's a stretch of land that belongs to the town of Oyster Bay rather than Nassau County. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like Actually, people, stayed in New York. People go to different beaches around. Now, I can understand going to a beach in Aruba, going to a beach in California, going to a beach in New York and expecting a different experience. But, you know, some people go to Long Beach, some go to Jones Beach, some go to Atlantic Beach, Toe Bay Beach. Are they all the bloody same? It's the same water. No, not really. The water that's in Atlantic Beach is going to be in Jones Beach in about half an hour. And it's going to go in a wave. That means if you pee in the water in Jones in Atlantic Beach? Yeah, eventually. So how come the pee from Jones Beach doesn't go to Atlantic Beach? Well, it depends on which way the current's going. I'm well, assuming. Are you, or is it just a cyclic world we're working in? Well, it's a sick and cyclic world, I believe. But I mean, you were going to say, you were, you were ticked off not about this. Not about the beach being closed. No, you weren't there. I want to know how come I'm, I hit every every red light on Sunrise Highway coming here. And I mean, not that yeah. I was going, going to be on time. But, <laughs> but, but You're, are you ever on time, I, Jeff? I'm always on time. I'm usually on time. Fifty mm, fifty. No. Yes. No. Yes, fifty fifty. You're usually within. Well, how do you? Def you're like the Long Island Railroad. You define on time as being there within the first six minutes and, and two seconds well, of when you're supposed I'm to be there. Five minutes, I'm on time. Okay. So, uh, if I'm in by ten or five, I was late. But I'm telling you, you know where I got hit by traffic signals? Where did you get hit by traffic signals? At the entrances to shopping malls. Now it's it's ten o'clock. Sunday night of July 4th weekend. Yeah. What shopping mall needs to have this signal for the people to exit? <laughs> well, were there still, were there? No. Are they, there's nothing so no. open. No, okay. And then the one where the light went fairly fast. Yeah. People couldn't stop turning left to get into McDonald's. <laughs> I swear to goodness, I always hit people. Well, I guess they didn't have enough crappy food at the barbecue. They didn't have enough processed meat. I know. Why are they going for hamburgers? On it's Fourth of July. I mean, you think that people had enough hamburgers and yeah. hot dogs to last a while? Maybe they wanted a shake. You can't do a good shake at the barbecue or or, so, or the apple pies. Yeah, they wanted the McFlurry. Yeah, they still do the pies. Well, they have the McFlurry in um, Thailand. That's I I know they sell them there. Oh no, I mean. <laughs> not, no, not the ties, the pies. Do they still have those little oh, cherry pies? Pie. Yes, they have hot apple pies. Yeah, no, I, used to, yeah, I used to like the cherry ones. It's on the dollar menu, the That's value right. menu. I, I really have not been in the McDonald's in you, years. You should know your value menu. I know, with my budget, but I'm not going to... It's not a value to my stomach. The dollar. My wife has been watching the haircutting one, which is surprisingly okay. Oh, it was Sheer Genius? Sheer Genius, that's interesting. And then there's the dog haircutting one that we watch just because we love dogs. But, I mean, come on. There's a new dog show on Channel 2 now, called or Channel 2 or 4, America's Greatest Dog. Oh. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Only if there's a dachshund. That's yeah. all I care and I, about. And I do, and I do love, um, I still watch Loving Those Trading Wives. Oh, uh, yeah, try. Wife swap. Love wife no, swap. No, no, no. We... I even watched a rerun. <laughs> I loved it. The, the clown, they, they're just this week, they reran the clown swap. The family what? of clowns. <gasps> That's who died. Oh, Bozo died. Larry Harmon died. I hate clowns. I just never liked clowns. I'm sorry for Larry Harmon. I'm sorry for his family. I'm not going to trash talk him, but clowns are scary. I love Larry Harmon. Clowns Larry Harmon. are scary. They're Creepy looking. No, they're not. They're fun, fun people. They're, what do you mean they're fun, fun? John Wayne Gacy. How much fun was he? Well, he had a lot of fun. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Imagine if you were a little kid, like four or five years old, you woke up and there was a clown face staring at you. I would shriek. I would poop myself like on reality TV. I clowns in my room when I was a little kid. Did you really? Yeah. Did you ever uh, do the... You, you seem like you would have been a good uh, party clown, actually. No, I didn't want Because you juggle. You know how to juggle, yeah. and you love you make balloon animals, or you just make balloons. I like to make balloon animals. You should have done the clown thing. I should have. 
I'm surprised. I'm surprised you didn't go there. Is what I'm saying. Don't go there. Why? I, well, what? You molest a kid at some point? What? No, I don't know. I just didn't want to do it. Oh, okay. But and I could Call see you in the makeup and everything. Irresponsible. Yeah. Well, anyway, he was. What was he? The original boson. He was the original boson. Oh. He was on Channel Nine or Channel Eleven, New York. And what was the the sidekick's name? Or did he not have a sidekick? Am I? I know there's Buffalo Bob and Clarabelle. Clarabelle was a clown with Buffalo Bob, so that was. Uh, wasn't Clarabelle led the man at one point? Oh wow, I think so. <laughs> I wish he had those really like the visual the checks. Man re reality show. Yeah. Wait, is he really doing it? He'll have to. No. What What are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm talking what are you talking about? The fact that he goes on TV and he goes, I'm almost in foreclosure. Right, yes, and yes. Goes, Ed McMahon, what are you doing in foreclosure? You made so much damn money. For doing, well, I won't say nothing. hi -oh. Here I am talking to my sidekick and saying the sidekick does almost nothing. Uh-oh. Well, we have a caller, so we're going to find out who this sidekick is. Is there anyone important? It's someone who hung up on us. Uh, Dave. Oh, we want to talk to him anyway. Dave. I want to talk to the people calling about the cell phone. Oh, I, know, I, know, I, I know. want to find out that our friend from a couple of weeks ago get his sidekick, the, 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 um, his the, Verizon phone. Yeah, that was the fireman, right? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He had his um, Blackberry. Fireman James ran over his Blackberry accidentally <laughs> with, a, with a fire truck. He was, he was climbing into the truck. It fell out of his pocket and he ran over it. This is not the person that I want putting out my fire. Oh, I'll take him putting out my fire. <laughs> Dave, know? did you get? I even called you at home to remind you. I didn't get to that. Script. That uh, wipeout. Wipeout was on, followed by the Japanese game show. Is it still funny, or has the novelty already it, it, started to? It never wears out. <laughs> <laughs> People bouncing on those big red balls just never stop to make. Well, me. you would say that, wouldn't you? Okay. No. What does, I don't even know what that means. I think babe. you know exactly what that you means. You homophobic mess, you. <laughs> mess? I mean, homophobic mess? Yes. Okay, thank you. Why, how am I a mess? Because you have no idea what your homo... You're, you have this weird idea that gay people just like big balls. I don't even understand that. Big red balls that, that people bounce on a wipeout. Every time a man sees a, a gay man sees a big, oh, big no, ball, no, they go no. crazy. And forget it if we see a salami. It's <laughs> all over. I mean, really. Well, my wife will vouch that when we go into Trader Joe's or the supermarket and they have the long Jerusalem cucumbers. I mean, there's no way that I'm not going to hold it in my hand and do something really disgusting with it. But it's not the gay men who are doing it, is it? <laughs> no, it's me. And I'm not doing something, so I'm why doing do something like gay men like the big balls. <laughs> the big red balls. Let's, let's be clear what we're talking about here. The, the big red balls that people slip and fall on on the show Wipeout. <laughs> to which the female host goes, that never gets old. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, it is the most hilarious thing. You're listening to WGBB Freeport. You're listening to AM 1240 or AM1240WGBB.com. You're listening to Dave's Gone By. You're obviously a very lonely person. There goes the neighborhood. We got David Lefkowitz here. He's a Long Island arts guy. He's got his own radio show. Greetings from Long Island, where every highway is a sunrise. It's time for Dave's Gone By, an hour of comedy, talk, and music brought to you by Total Theater, with your host, Dave Lepkowitz. You've never heard anything like it, so sit back, relax, squeal if you must. Here's the host of Dave's Gone By, Dave! Tropical hot dog night! I like see flamingos in a fruit bite! Well, there goes the neighborhood. Welcome, 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 everyone at the end of this July 4th weekend. It is July 6th, 2008, and we're here for episode number 281 of Dave's Gone By, right here, right now on WGBB. And I'm calling it that because our special guest tonight on Dave's Gone By has a new CD 
called right here, right now. Her name is Karen Mason, and we'll be getting to her in just a couple of minutes, but we've got some business to do before we do. First of all, I've introduced myself. I'm Dave Lefkowitz, radio personality, uh, theater critic, journalist, humorist, and all those kinds of things. I'm here with my very frequent guest co-host, Jeff Goodman, who is a bon vivant and all about man around town. That's it. Or, uh, no, I got it, it's all around man about town. Yeah, well. I got kind of roundabout on that, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I was talking of the theater. <laughs> How was your weekend, Jeff Goodman? It was fine. I went I went to a lovely barbecue on Friday. Ooh, who, where, what? At, the, of all places, the Lilanix. <laughs> The Leilonics? Who's who's Leilonics? I, I, I'm hooked on Leilonics, by the way. <laughs> ah, eh, ooh, ah, ooh. See? Well, they had a bat mitzvah that the Fancy Schmancy worked on a couple of weeks ago. Now, what's Fancy Schmancy, Jeff? Fancy Schmancy is the best party decorating firm in the world. The world? Can you really vouch yeah. for that? Yeah, actually, Universe. Oh, I'm I'm Mr. Universe of the party decorating. So you've world. checked all the planets. You've checked near the best Absolutely. party people. I uh, even checked Uranus. You stole my joke! You stole my joke right there! Oh no! Darn! And there were no planet particles there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to kick you in the Venus. Yes, I am, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Uh, in my Venus schnitzel? <laughs> Jeff Goodman is the founder and proprietor of Fancy Schmancy Balloons, but they're not just balloons. You do party uh, decorating. They do centerpieces, sign in boards, everything you can imagine. So, for. Might as well tell people how well, to your get party it. needs. Call five one six seven nine seven three two two nine. And and by the way, yeah, if you want to know about theater, where would where would one go to find the Bible of Broadway? One would go either to Theater Circle on West Forty Fourth Street, or you could go to the Drama Bookshop on West Fortieth Street because you can get single copies there of Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine, the Bible of Broadway. But if you want to subscribe. You better go to performingartsinsider.com because Dave's Gone By listeners get a huge, just like 30% off if you're a Dave's Gone By listener off so subscription. if you really want to get off, if you want to get off, go to performing, large, large off. <laughs> performingartsinsider.com plus at davesgoneby.org. That'll give you all the discount information about the, the place to find out everything that's happening on the stages of New York. And then if they have a a burning desire to make a copy of the the, the uh, a page yes. of Performing Arts Insider. Where would they go, Dave? They would go to the Copy Kings of Broadway, Hewlett, Minuteman Press, located where? I always know, but it used to be next to Loman's Shoes, but I feel so lost. Loman's <laughs> Shoes closed. Well, it's actually opposite the old regular Loman's. That hasn't changed. So... On Broadway in Hewlett, Hewlett Minuteman Press, for any job, big or small. And if you're Dave's Gone, li- g- Dave's gone By if you're listener, listening to this show right now, you get 10% off any job at Hewlett Minuteman Press. 516-797-3229. But you must be number. willing to admit that you're a Dave's Gone By listener. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You deserve 10% off if you put yourself through this every Sunday night. And by the way, I want to give another plug to Total Theater. That is the parent company, by the way. We don't mention it very often. Total Theater is the company that sponsors this show. It's the company that helps co-publish Performing Arts Insider magazine. It uh, is the producer of the TV show Shalom Dammit that you can watch on YouTube and on uh, Manhattan and Long Island Cable TV. It is also the founder and proprietor of a website that we really never get a chance to mes- mention called That's Total cool. TotalTheater.com. It's the ultimate medicine for people who are looking to find Broadway reviews, off-Broadway regional, international reviews, and also feature articles about the theater. And they just had a, a milestone this past week. They they got they passed the milestone. They they, they passed the stone, and now they've, they've gotten medical attention with that medicine you were talking about. And so, <laughs> it's um the milestone is that there are now more than one thousand reviews. In total theater, some are from what Broadway. What was one thousandth review? You know, that's a marvelous question. I don't know because now they're up to I about eleven hundred. I want the answer next week. Okay, I no, there's no way I can figure that one out. Why? I don't know what order. They're in alphabetical order. There's no way to really well, tell. Don't you know the last one you put on? No, no it was about a hundred reviews ago. 
we, we put up a lot this past week. But all I'm saying is, there are now a thousand different reviews for you to read and enjoy on TotalTheater.com. Also about 300 well, articles. Read. So check it out. TotalTheater.com. Spell it any way that you want to. Theater with an E-R or an R-E. Because now, your search engine will correct them. Yeah. Well, no, we actually, the, the domain name is owned, both of them. So either one, they're both correct. See? So there you go. Anyway, Anything. let's tell people what's going to be on tonight's episode of Dave's Gone By, including singer and actress Karen Mason. Yay! And we're going to go inside Broadway for a little bit of Broadway and off-Broadway news, as well as my visit to a puppet theater, not one of my usual visitation places, but did you know that there is a children's puppet theater on Long Island? In yes, Hitchcock. Dave, I knew. You knew that? Have you ever been there? I told you this last week. We discussed this. Oh, because right I went the there. Station. Well, yeah, but did you know before I mentioned? Oh, you did. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you didn't know that. Well, anyway, it's pretty interesting. It, and it happens well, to be the former home of one of my balloon competitors. Ah, so you must be pretty thrilled that they're over there. Um, and it, anyway, I went to see a show there. They do their version of the Little Mermaid, so I'll be reviewing that on Inside Broadway tonight. And also, we will be saying goodbye, a very unfond farewell to Senator Jesse Helms, who died this week. Thank goodness. It's about time. He died on July 4th, of he all died things. On the 4th of July. Yeah, right. Huh. <sighs> well, I, I guess only the good... day for you, huh? He was 89 years old, so I guess only the good do die young. But we'll, we'll get to Jesse, we'll get to the puppets, and we will get, certainly, to Karen Mason. All of that tonight on Dave's Gone By, which begins... Then... Shalom, damn it! This is Rabbi Saul Solomon of Temple Sons of Bitches in Great Neck, New York. And I personally invite you to watch my TV show, Shalom, damn it! Rabbi Saul Solomon's Peace, Love, and Acid Reflux Hour every Wednesday and Friday morning at 7.30 on Cablevision Channel 115. If you've never seen a Jew before, this is your chance! Shalom, damn it! 7.30 Wednesday and Friday mornings, Channel 115. Or in Manhattan, Channel 67 Sunday afternoons at 1.30. Or anytime, anywhere on YouTube. Shalom, damn it! You have my blessing! What's black and white and red all over? Photocopies made at Hewlett Minuteman Press, the copy kings of Broadway. Any job that you have, including black and white copies, and they've got a brand new color copier, great quality, good prices, Wonderful family that has owned Ulit Minute Man Press since the 1970s. So check them out. 516-569-5577. Hewlett Minute Man Press. They're the kings. Come on, babe. Why don't we paint the town? I'm gonna rule. My knees and roll my stockings down. I start the car on a wolfy spot with a gin is cold, but the piano's hot. It's just a noisy hall where there's a nightly brawl and all that Welcome back to Dave's Gone By, and right here, right now, we've got someone whose new CD is called Right Here, Right Now. Her name is Karen Mason, and if you're a theater person, you know her, because you may have seen her in Sunset Boulevard or Mamma Mia. If you're a cabaret person, you may have seen her in the local clubs, and bunches and bunches of other places. So it is a pleasure and an honor to have In the Neighborhood with us. Right here, right now, Karen Mason. How are you? Dave, thank you very much. I'm doing really well, actually. I just got home from uh, doing the afternoon um, matinee of Hairspray, and uh, we had a really fun audience. It was a lot of fun. And um, are, know, some I, I, are, are some of the audiences usually good or bad or in the middle? Well, you know, every audience is, is has a big question mark attached to it. You know, you're never quite sure... The, the you know the the mob rule it's it's really an interesting dynamic you know people don't realize how important audiences are for li live performers um, we totally 
get jazzed when an audience responds, you know, to the excitement of being in a theater. And today, you know, the matinee is a, usually a younger, especially on Sunday, is a younger audience. And they're a little bit more verbal and, you know, easy to, uh, to register that kind of excitement, which is great. It makes it easier for us and makes us excited to perform for them. That's kind of interesting because in the history of, of commercial theater since I've been born, Wednesday matinees were when the decrepit would come. That's, <laughs> that's when the, the, the lights would shine off the blue hair in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you know, usually that's the Wednesday matinee. The Sunday right. matinees and the Saturday matinees usually, especially for a show like Hairspray, you know, are when the, the kids are, are not in school and they can come and see the show with their folks. Cool. So you've been doing hairspray since uh, for I, I think it was, uh, mm, boy, we had so much going on around that time. I started at the end of March. Oh, cool. So, so I've playing, been doing it just a short period of time. Playing Velma von Tussle, yes. who is the, the mean mother. She is. No, no, I, uh, no, that's not part of a compound word. You're actually a mean mother of Amber Von Tussle, who right. is trying to, to get the dance career going, and also the boyfriend, and is being checked at every turn by um, by Tracy Turnblad. Yeah, you're, you're, I mean, that's pretty good. You're you're playing the role that was Michelle Pfeiffer in the movie. Not that's there. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it is a lot of fun. I I understand that actually when the show first opened. Uh, before the movie had come out, that there were, like, 12 costume changes. And now there aren't as many. And, uh, you know, I when I saw the movie, I thought, because I had seen the show originally and, and saw those costume changes, and then saw the movie and saw all of her fantastic outfits, and I thought, I thought this is going to be so much fun. And then when I got to my my fitting and saw that they, they had definitely cut down the number of yeah. outfits. <laughs> well, no, actually, I... Um, I the fellow who guest co-hosts a lot of the episodes of Dave's Gone By is a Hairspray fan. Oh, really? Loved it when he went to see it and still liked it a couple of years. This is before you, you came into the show because if he'd seen it with you, of course, he would have loved it he even loved more. It, yes. But he did say, eh, the producers uh, cut back a bit. They got a little chintzy here and there, and it didn't quite feel like the same as when it opened. But yeah, no reflection you know, that on happens. You. That happens when they start, you know, getting past that initial... Um, burst of energy when a show opens, uh, you know, and then they start having all of the the um, traveling, you know, the touring yeah. companies going out. Um, but you know, what's great about this show? I've actually had some people come and see this particular production who has, you know, who had seen all, you know, kinds of people doing the roles that they really do like this company in particular. That you know, George Wendt is playing uh, oh Edna. Gosh. And he is just phenomenal. And the woman playing Marissa Perry, uh, the woman playing uh, Tracy is Marissa Perry. And she is also fantastic. You know, it just, it, it just seems to be a nice combination of talents right now. Now, speaking of talent, um, there's another show that you have been involved with in the past that is currently on Broadway. You're not in it, but I'm wondering, um, they're doing Gypsy obviously with Patti LuPone, and uh -huh. she won the Tony Award, and everybody's thinking she's phenomenal, and she was. You did Gypsy out in California, so ha first of all, have you seen the Broadway Gypsy that they're doing now, and also how you felt that your Mama Rose that you did differed from either LuPone's or, or some of the great roses in previous times? Well, you know, you um, I did not see this current one uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing, because I did it recently, uh, about a year ago, out at the Westchester Broadway Theater. And um, it, I did not want to see another production because I did want it to impact upon the choices I, I was making. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I hear it's, you know, a, a really exciting, it, it couldn't be a bad production. It's. Oh, no. The score and that book are so incredible that if you have people with any modicum of talent, they're going to be able to pull off, you know, at least at a certain level, that fantastic score and that fantastic book. Now, the difference is that you have somebody who is an absolute star and someone of Patti LuPone's quality and caliber and just incredible gifts 
that's going to, you know, and Laura Benanti and and Boyd Gaines, they're going to just raise it to an astronomical level. You know, so it's it's really one of the most magical scores and books of a, a musical oh, yeah. I have ever been involved in. But I was also wondering about the way you approached such a galvanic role as Mama Rose. Well, you know, I, when I was approaching it, I... I certainly, you know, I, I, you want to steal from the best because they knew what they were doing. They lived with this role for a long time. And that's, you know, Merman and Angela Lansbury when she uh, did it. And then also, um, you know, any of the greats that, that people have seen along the way, Tyne Daly. You, you have to put your own personal spin on it. And my spin, I think I approached it more from what I had to offer as a personality, which was more from uh, um, the way that I express desperation will be different from the way that Patti LuPone expresses desperation. How do you express desperation, Karen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ask my husband. <laughs> you know, I think it, I approached it maybe not quite so... Um, you know, it's hard because I have not seen her production of it. So, well, no, but I, I'm saying like Merman or Lansbury or or Bernadette Peters. I mean, any of the yeah. above. I think everybody has that same core of frustration, and you know, certainly that Rose wants to be. She is somebody who is needy and frustrated, and knew she was destined for something better than the life that she had and didn't quite know how to go after it. So she takes all of that energy and puts it through her, you know, through yeah. uh, June. I also approached it from a vocal uh, point of view. That's such a great score. I, I loved singing that score. For me, Everything's Coming Up Roses was the most exciting moment in that show because I think that's when she becomes just slightly crazy. I don't think she's crazy. I don't... You know, I don't think she's a crazy woman. I don't think. What well, I remember I, when I did it out in California, the one thing that that I I found really interesting was that um, her son, uh, Gypsy Rosalie's son, Eric Preminger, came to see the show, and he was uh, he had his book with him that he had written uh -huh. about his mom and his family. And the one thing that struck me was that he said that Rose was a very charming woman, that she could walk into a room and really charm the pants off of anybody, but that that June was scared to death of her. Hmm. And I thought that was really interesting, that it wasn't this, you know, diesel force um, that she w she really used her sexual wiles. She used everything. She was a woman in in you know early century last last century doing something that not very many women were doing at that time. Right. And she had to use everything available to her to to achieve her goals. You can really explore as an actress all those differences that you have and bring that to your characterization. And that's. That's the beauty of a great role like like Rose is that yeah. she is very beautifully laid out. She's really well structured and well laid out and has a gorgeous arc. But there's still that room for that personalization about it. You know how you approach the role. And I loved I, I just loved every minute of singing that score and 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 being her. And you know one of the perks of being an actress many times is. You, getting to explore all those things about yourself, uh, sometimes you go, wait, wait, that's a part of my personality I really like. I think I'd like to do more with that. And I, the thing that I pulled, a, I took away from um, being Rose was her fearlessness. She really did not think about anything but achieving her goal. Hmm. And there's. A kind of beauty in that, you know. I, growing up Catholic Midwest, you know, I was always trying to take care of other people and make sure, I, you know, I was liked and did all of these things, so that, you know, sometimes it got in the way of of what do what does Karen really want? And one of the things I took away from Rose was 
what do you want, and go after it. And actually, speaking of fearlessness, your connection to the show is even a bit deeper because one of your very first Broadway roles is that you were in Jerome Robbins' Broadway. Right. And I think you played one of the right. strippers in... in uh... Oh, I was Mazeppa. You were Miss, Miss Mazeppa. Yeah. Cool. So I had to learn in my two weeks, you know, the, when you go into a new show as a replacement, basically you get mm, about a week and a half, two weeks of rehearsal before... Then you have your, what they call a put-in, which is your rehearsal with the rest of the company. Your one rehearsal with the rest of the company. Wow. And then you do the show. And they said, you know, you can either, because Mazeppa plays the trumpet, you know, if you can't learn how to play the trumpet, we'll have the guys from the, you know, somebody from the orchestra play it. And I thought, no way. I'm, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And I'm going to learn how to do it in those, you know, short periods of time. So I would come home after rehearsal, and I'd have my my uh, trumpet and be jamming it against the side of my sofa so my neighbors wouldn't complain. Yeah. And, you know, finally just jammed some sort of sound out of that, that poor trumpet. And I, I loved it. I loved playing that role. It, you know, again, it's... These three women walk out on stage in the, you know, second act and steal the whole show. What could be wrong with that? Ah, fine wine, great books, priceless antiques. All that's missing is something to listen to. But of course, episodes of Dave's Gone By. The music, the comedy, the perceptive talk. Entire shows preserved on compact disc. Any episode you choose, just $11, shipping included. No home is complete without Dave's Gone By on CD. So visit davesgoneby.org because you're worth it. We're speaking with Karen Mason in the neighborhood, the lovely and talented Karen Mason. Certainly those words fit. Let's go back, though, to your very first Broadway show. You had the distinct... You know, there was this um, somewhat of a hoopla this season when a musical called Glory Days, a very bad musical called Glory Days, opened and closed in one night. Yeah. And it, it was, surprisingly enough, the first time you had a one-night flop in almost 15 years. There used to be a lot more... For, yeah. It, it, were, it was, oh no, it's not 15 years, like um, five years. Something called Bill, the that's oldest. That's pretty amazing. Right, because there used to be a, cu a couple of those every season. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, <laughs> <laughs> your Broadway debut was in Play Me a Country Song. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't see it. It might have been actually pretty good, but it didn't, obviously, it lasted one night. Yeah. How did well, you deal with that? Oh, it was hard, you know, because I had moved in 79 from Chicago to New York thinking I was, as everybody who moves to the city does, I'm destined for greatness. And, of course, they're going to want me, you know, in a matter of seconds to be in all these Broadway shows. And when I finally got into Play Me a Country Song, and it was a, a, a show called uh, jukebox Opry that was done off Broadway, and they decided to try to expand it. And there were just some, oh, some of the artistic staff were just having problems with each other. And you know, when that happens, pretty much you're screwed because <laughs> nobody's talking to each other, and you know, the actors are just trying to make the stuff work, and um, it just never quite had a, a, a core. And on opening night, and this was after like, you know, maybe two weeks of previews, on opening night, the party was going to be on the Circle Line tour. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, in my naivete, I really thought, well, you know, they'll, maybe they'll try to keep it open. I really didn't think we were going to close. But they took us out on the Circle Line tour, and from what I remember, it was because they really didn't want us reading the reviews. Oh. And so there was this boat of drunken performers <laughs> and, you know, tech people circling Manhattan. And when we got off the boat, they uh, we saw the reviews and also the, they had told us that, you know, come get your stuff. That night? Or yeah. The, whoa. Yeah. Oh, I figured they'd wait until the next, <clears throat> next hour. They didn't want anybody jumping overboard. No. <laughs> well, we were off the boat. We were off the boat. But it was, you know, you just... Right. I, when I was doing community theater, there seemed to be a little bit more 
um, organization than what was going on in Play Me a Country Song. And it was very dispiriting, you know. I, I, I certainly did not want that to be my first Broadway experience. But, you know, in a way it kind of uh, slapped me into reality on what, you know, just because you have an awful lot of money in a show doesn't mean that you're, you know, you've got all, this, mm. all the ducks in a row. And also the fact, maybe the fact that the show was not going particularly well. You had that, um, those problems with the creatives and the sense that it might not get, go over too well or good, get good reviews may have made it easier in some odd way when it closed um, on opening night than some other shows where things go pretty well. The audience is really liking it. You think you got a hit on your hands, and then boom, you open the New York Times, boom, you open Variety, boom, and yeah. then, like, what, what happened? Right. I know that's got to be so. It, it's such an amazing phenomenon that this amount of money, and and on your lives and you know and your career and your employment is left up in the opinions of so few people, especially when an audience really loves it. I mean, honestly, it is for the audience. You know, it's not necessarily that you do these shows for the gratification of you know having these critics come in, but you know that's the system is that they. They come see the show, give their opinion, and then your fate, you know, is dependent upon on their opinions. Well, I'm I'm also a critic, so I'm not necessarily so sure that's a bad thing. It's not. But it should be it's, more than one or two critics. It should well, be absolutely group. because yeah. one one opinion, you know, being the 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 difference between opening, you know, staying open and closing. I find that just. I, I, I think, that, first of all, that's an amazing amount of responsibility to put on one person's opinion. And most critics don't want that, by the way. They I really don't want so. to be the guy or the one of two guys. They, they just want to have their say yeah. and, and have some sort of influence and to tell pe people who are reading, hey, run out and go see this, or gosh, you know, don't waste your money, don't, you know, don't support this bad stuff that they're doing. But other than that, they don't want to have the responsibility of closing a show. From what I understand, a long time ago, that there used to be more, you know, it used to be more opinions oh, yeah. that, that the, you know, the fate of the show would rely upon. Because and that seems right to me. I, I think, you know, critics are, I, I think people, you know, it does help people guide people on what they're going to be doing with their entertainment dollars. I get that. But and I think in a way it also make sure, I think it keeps artistic people on their games because you don't want a bad review, you know, and so maybe you will not, you know, cut corners the way that you would if you thought you could get away with it. Because you, you do also want to appeal to a quote-unquote more discerning and knowledgeable audience. Absolutely. And if that isn't there and you're just assuming, oh, well, it's, yeah, we're going to play in a senior citizen's home and... Right. Okay, anybody I've done that too, Dave. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but did you bring your A game? <laughs> you know what? Yes, I did. Oh, right, you did, yeah. I'm sure you did. <laughs> hey, all you swinging hep cats, hep kittens, and hepa filters. Have I got a cool book for you. It's called Marriage, Babies, and the End of the World. It's published by Holbo Books, and it's got a bunch of comedies in there by Dave Lepkowitz, the host of Dave's Gone By. I think you'll find them funny, so cats and kittens, give it a look. Davesgoneby.org is the cool place to go for marriage, babies, and the end of the world. Hi, this is Karen Mason, and I am thrilled to be on Dave's Gone By at WGBB in Freeport. Karen Mason, with a couple of more minutes here in the neighborhood, so much to ask and so little time. I do want to mention, I did not realize or remember that you were in the original Torch Song trilogy. I was, but I was not. Here's what, it was one of, this is one of those crazy show business stories. I had gotten Play Me a Country Song, and uh, then I had auditioned for um, Torch Song trilogy when they were moving from off-Broadway to Broadway. And Harvey Firestein uh, loved my audition. They offered me the role of Lady Blues when it was moving to Broadway, but Play Me a Country Song would not let me out of my contract. Oh. oh so I was not able to move with the show, but Harvey, you know, he's such a mensch. Um, when Susan 
who played Lady Blues went on vacation, he had me come in and do her two weeks. So I, I wasn't totally uh, forgotten, but it was a that was a really hard reality oh, when I that can happened. Imagine was was Harvey really cool back then? Oh, oh. I wonder what he was like. He, you know what? He's an absolute larger than life, wonderful man. He is such there. I don't think he could be in any other business but show business. He's just, he is loving and warm and creative as can be and um, and just so funny, you know. I mean, his mind is so brilliant. And he's a good guy, you know. There are a lot of brilliant people, but there are a lot of jerks, too, and, and he is not that. He is a really great guy and a very loving, understanding man. Someone who also comes off like that seems to be Jerry Herman. Uh -huh. I, I've spoken to him, and people I know who, who've known him say that he really, he's a sweetheart. And you keep pestering, about, pestering him about something. What would that be? <laughs> How do you know that? I do research. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, you think I just woke up yesterday? I think I'll have a radio show. Hmm, I'll get a microphone and uh, make a couple of wires. No, I just want to know how that is out there. You know, you think you're being so discreet in your life, and no, you're not. I've always wanted to do MAME. That, to me, is, uh, you know, that would be such a great, fun show. It's got a little bit of everything and a great score and a terrific um, book. And it's a great character, you know. I think there's a little bit of mame in me, and um, I've been, you know, sending him notes and all kinds of things. But you know, it, if it's if it's in my my uh, cards, you know, hopefully it will happen. Well, Karen Mason, I, I hope you get maimed. Um, as <laughs> I had to do that joke. I'm yeah, sorry. That's good. <laughs> Maybe in a good way. Um, I only wish we could keep you here in the neighborhood talking and, and, and having so much fun. You're certainly invited back. And please come on down physically to the neighborhood next time because we really want you here. Oh, um, thank you. We'd person. love to do that. So, Karen Mason, best of luck. What, what's um, your in hairspray until when? Uh, until October 4th. Everybody, you got a couple of weeks. Please, please, please go see Karen Mason in hairspray. Buy her CD right here, right now. And Thank I mean you. that. And also, we're yeah. doing Birdland on August 4th oh. at 7 p.m. So, you know, I like to I like to do to keep my uh, my skills sharp. So I, I hope you'll come down and maybe uh, join us there. Come make it a Masonic evening, ladies and gentlemen, at Birdland <laughs> with Karen Mason. Bless you. Thank you so much for being in the neighborhood. Oh, it was my pleasure, Dave. I look forward to the next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. I don't know why I'm frightened. I know my way around here. The cardboard trees, the painted seas, the sound here. Here's a world to rediscover, but I'm not in any hurry, and I need a In overcrowded hallways The atmosphere as thrilling here as always Feel the early morning madness Feel the magic in the making Why, everything's as if we never said goodbye I've spent so many mornings just trying to resist you. I'm trembling now. You can't know how I've missed you. Miss the fairy tale adventures in this ever-spinning playground. We were young. Coming out of makeup, and 
lights already burning. Not long until the cameras will start turning. And the early morning madness and the magic in the making. Yes, everything's as if we never said goodbye. I don't want to be alone. That's all in the past. This world's waited long enough. I've come home at last. And of this I will be bigger and brighter than we knew it. So watch me fly. We all know. In overcrowded hallways So much to say Not just today But always We'll have early morning madness We'll have magic in the making Yes, everything's as if we never said goodbye Look at me, I'm the American consumer, and I want to spend my money on stores, restaurants, showrooms, travel agencies, mail order catalogs, sell me stuff. How do you reach me? Well, I listen to Dave's Gone By, so if you advertise there, you'll certainly have my attention. Davesgoneby.org has all the details, or email davesgoneby at aol.com for the rate card. I'm listening. Sell me what you got. Inside Broadway, brought to you by Total Theater's Performing Arts Insider, your everything theater guide. Yes, we're going inside Broadway, as we generally do on Dave's Gone By, to look at the world of theater on the stages of New York, proudly brought to us by Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine. By the way, reminding you that I'm Dave Lefkowitz. I'm here with my guest co-host, Jeff Goodman, also a Broadway fanatic. So here's the news of the week. Guess what's not going to happen on Broadway this season? Rent's not closing? The rent rent is scheduled to close in the fall. Nope. What happened last season that isn't going to happen this season? Oh, there's not going to be an act actor strike. That's right, because Actors Equity and the Broadway League have reached a deal. So for at least three years, uh, they're not going to be strike affected or anything like that. So that's kind of kind of no pressure on for Thanksgiving or the holiday season. We all just worry about doing good theater and not whether people are going to be walking picket lines. Kind of nice. Although the thought of Estelle Parsons on the picket line. I don't get it. Bill Bob. Because <laughs> has <laughs> Isn't that Harvey Firestein? <laughs> no. Well, so they're, they're the same person. Oh, okay, there you go. Um, there, there's also a happy phenomenon that happened just the day before July 4th. On July 3rd, history was made yet again. I know, Phantom ran a yeah. certain number. Like Phantom six hit its 8,500th performance on Broadway on July 3rd. It has now been 
the longest running show in Broadway history for more than two years. It hit that record number back on January 9th, 2006. We're never going to get to the Majestic Theater again, <laughs> are we? I know. And believe it or not, the, it hit the longest run mark at 7,486 shows. So it is now over a 1,000 performances more than the longest running show before it. Which was? What was? Was it Cats? Yeah. No. Yeah, well, it was Cats. Okay. Um, Phantom, by the way, opened January 26, 1988. 12.5 million people have been to see it on Broadway, paying over $690 million to see it. And worldwide, 80 million people have seen Phantom in one form or another. Including the Vegas production, which we saw. Recently. That's right. Which is pretty, it's a spectacle, and it's it was really spectacular. Again. Yeah. Now, I want to just tell people and remind people that uh, TJ and Dave who were guests on this program about a year or so ago. Uh, they occasionally come back to the Barrow Street Theater. Well, they're coming back uh, to that theater July 25th, 26th, and 27th. They do improv, but it's kind of a different improv. It's long form and very low-key and funny. So check them out, TJ and Dave, coming back to the Barrow Street Theater towards the very end of July. Find out more, I guess, by Googling TJ and Dave. Now, well, they're like that when that happens. The One of the shows that may be a little bit in trouble on Broadway because it did not do well at all on the Tony Awards, even though it, it, people were saying it might have won Best Musical, is uh, the musical Passing Strange. But there's some news about that show. Yes, yes. Say the news. I, I want to I, I wanna go on a different tangent, so talk about Passing Strange. Well, Passing Strange. Strange is that rock musical by Stu, S-T-E-W, and Heidi Rodewald about Stu's coming of age, his leaving America for a while to go explore Europe. Yeah, to find only, the real. Yeah, the, find the real, find his own personality, and also the way back to honoring his mother, although it was a little bit too late for that. But... It, it has wonderful music in it. I can't wait for the CD to come out. But something else is happening with it. This week it was announced that Spike Lee will direct the movie version, which uh, is kind of odd because I thought Spike Lee was supposed to be busy directing Stalag 17 or Stalag 13 this coming season. I don't know what's happening with that show. But you were, what was your tangent on all oh, this? Oh, no, I was going to tell you that um, Passing Strangers is only doing <coughs> like less than... 60% business. Exactly. That's why I'm, um, after the Tonys were and, over. And and I was upset, remember, because when, when um, Crybaby closed, they were doing 70s and 80s. Yeah. They just closed. I don't know why they closed. Neither do I. I think they, they, were doing they had well. no advance. That was the thing. They were counting yeah. on the Tonys for advance sales. Whereas Passing Strange, again, they probably thought they we're close to taking the best musical Tony. Now, we totally turned things around. It didn't happen. It went to In the Heights. And now, I'm assuming that they're struggling. The only thing is, um, well, has Passing Strange has a small cast, not a huge set, and... They probably have very... Well, they have a small band on stage. Right. I think their overhead is a lot lower, so yeah. they can make less. But how much less can they make? We'll see. Hopefully, they'll get through the summer. But if not, at least they will be preserved... Thanks to Spike on Lee. On film. On film. And, and, well, I think it's a television, a cable film, rather than a, oh. a feature film. Oh. Speaking of feature films, our final piece of news Mama for Inside mia, Broadway. Mia, ba, 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 ba. The film debuted in London last week. Um, so it's going to come here. Uh, it opened on July It's 4th. like two more weeks, right? Yeah. It opens here July 16th. So I'm so looking forward to that. Are you? Yeah. I, I'm not crazy about the musical on Broadway, but it's probably going to be a fun movie. I think um, it's just going to be fun. I heard Meryl Streep is really, really good, and the actress looks real cute. So, I mean, I think that's, that's pretty much all. And then the you the Three Fathers, which are played by... Um, who did they get for the movie? They got... Uh, who was Remington Steele? Pierce Brosnan, okay. Uh, and they got two other... Well, it's the movies. Of course, they're going to they're gonna get some good high-level people for that. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, they got... They got a lot of that. Christine Baranski is oh, one okay. of the, the um, her friends. She's on Broadway right now in Boeing. Boeing. She's actually. I I thought she would be funnier in Boeing. Boeing than she actually is, but uh, she's she's a pretty wonderful actress. So I'm sure she does funny work in Mamma Mia. 
hope she does funny work anyway. Yeah, I think she will. Well, but I, I, yeah. but that's that's a big thing. I, I mean, I, I'm still waiting to see. I want to see Wally. I'm dying to see Wally. And that's supposed to be very, very good. I want to get, I, I, I want to find out if you want to see it, and then I'd see it with you. But I don't think you're a Wally um, person. Well, no, I like the animated films. You know, I like uh, especially the really, really good. I like Cars, which was pretty. Good, I didn't see that. All those Disney Disney films. Anyway, speaking of children's stuff, and, and ah. speaking of, uh, I went to the theater. Hey, did you go to a puppet theater recently? By accident. By complete accident. How do you go by accident? Because we were going to, um, we had our friend in town with kids. Her husband was away out of town in Europe, and she had the kids for a day. So she was coming out to Long Island, and instead of going to the beach like we always do, because there were bombs washing up on the beach. No, no, this was before That's the whole fireworks true. thing. We, we were going go to go to the Dave. Reptile Museum that they have out in Suffolk, except for, or, no, it's no, Upper in Nassau. And without really, <coughs> but to remember, it was closed down. Totally forgot about that part. That the guy was was closed down at the reptile museum. So we end up in Hicksville anyway, figuring we'll find something to do. We'll find a park. We'll find a restaurant. We pass out of the blue, just and driving the railroad, around of the, the Long Island Railroad parking lot. Pretty much, and it, it is not a particularly inviting neighborhood, I should say, in Hicksville. This beautiful. A gorgeously painted, like, almost like a European style theater. And it turned out it was a puppet theater. The children's puppet theater, it's called the Long Island Puppet Theater, located at 10 Heights Place in Hicksville. And we, we just come up because they have all this cool stuff in the garden out front and they're watering the plants and they've got all these statuary things. Were they watering the beanstalk? That they did. They didn't have beanstalks, they just had shrubs and cool plants and flowers. Had a big beanstalk. That's very well maybe when they do Jack and the Beanstalk that's what they'll do. What they did have was enough things with this hose going on that these our friends children who were really misbehaving that day were running around and getting into the water and putting their fingers into the fountain pretty much uncontrollable and they were very cool about it. I mean, the owners of the uh, puppet theater were They're like so happy to see some a custom, well, a yeah. custom <laughs> That's true too. Wait just a minute. Just a minute. It was a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. I think it was a Saturday. So we were like, hey, I'm supposed to have a show today. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> come on, come on. And so we waited a little while in their little courtyard. Because Mrs. Owner is on the phone going, we got some people. We yeah. need some actors. They have five of us. They, they, they said, we got some ringers. Come on. And they only need two people to do one puppet show for this particular performance. They were Why doing they The Little Mermaid. Oh, Two, two people, and so we go in, and it's this like little fairyland wonderland of puppet theater. How much was it to get in? Eleven dollars. Children and adults the same, which was kind of odd. But well, it's a children's theater. Yeah, yeah, and, and for eleven dollars, you pass about an hour's worth of time in total. It's about forty-five minutes for the actual show, and it's worth it just to go in and see the building, because. First, in the, in the lobby, of course, they have all these things for sale and all these cool puppet and children's items. But you go past that into the main area, and they've got in display cases all these old marionettes and, and pictures of puppets and pictures from previous shows. And it's really done up in a very nice way. There, it isn't just some little crappy room that they threw some chairs into and turned into a theater. Yeah, kids, sit down, watch a show. No, it's not like that. It's really a... You walk into a real theater space that is made with love and I respond to that very strongly and then they call you into the main room it's not feminine it's my maybe more my children's side the, the side that appreciates craft and artistry and wonder now was the show that wonderful no <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, was, it was puppet theater, so they have these marionettes that were not all that exciting to watch and it's, it's all pre-recorded soundtrack Dialogue. so the whole thing all the music everything is is pre-recorded and the fact is i could have gotten better sound by bringing like my sony cd player and plopping it in the middle of the room <laughs> from what they were playing from like this big over mic but muffled speaker thing that, that they have from behind the curtain so that was a little annoying and I, it was kind of it was kind of boring i have to say it's a lot here's the story of the little mermaid which in their particular hands, it makes her appreciate Disney a little bit more, I'll say that. Guy goes down into the sea, she rescues him, she takes him to a cabaret where all these little fish acts do their thing, 
And then finally, you after about 35 minutes, you meet the evil woman. And that's over in about five minutes, and that's the show. The octopus. The octopus lady, yeah. Ursula. It was Ursus. There were points that were entertaining. It was just cute. It was sweet. The, we had a little boy and a little girl with us. The little boy was like, didn't like it at all. The little girl kind of, like, but it was not, it was okay. They could have shaved it down. It was not enchanting. It was cute. It was sweet. Little moments get, you know, it basically is damn things on pop popsicle sticks half the time. Somebody's going up and down with a popsicle stick to music, and that's puppet theater. Uh, it's, it's not exactly Basil Twist. <laughs> and I don't even like Basil Twist. But you know what? Again, I respect what they're doing and the fact that they're doing it in the middle of Hicksville, in the middle of Long Island of nowhere, that there's a real Honest to God puppet theater, and they're trying. And it's kind of sweet and kind of cute. So check it out, the Long Island Puppet Theater um, in Hicksville. On Heights Place. Wherever. Yeah, near, it's two blocks from the railroad. Five, well, just six. go to the, ask where the railroad parking is. It's a little bit east. The, it's in the easternmost railroad parking to Hicksville. Right. Five, it's, one, it's just, I'm sorry, it's yeah. the parking, it's just east of uh, 106, 107. Okay. Or is it just 107? And they usually do like two or three shows a day during the weekend. It's, like one, it's 107, just be, just south of where the split of 106, 107 is. For more information, I didn't, I forgot to, to bring their um, their website, but 516-932-5469. For, and, and they'll be doing all the other shows. Now they're doing Little Mermaid. They have a special Halloween show. And then, of course, obviously they do a Christmas show. And they do things... I think pretty much all year round at the Long Island Puppet Theater, 932-5469, area code 516. Well, we've got to go... And I bet you you can even Google it online. Oh, yeah, just Long Island Puppet Theater for, for all that information. Anyway, we're going to go outside Inside Broadway now, finish up this segment because we want to mm. say goodbye to someone who is certainly against things that Broadway stands for. We'll, uh, we'll bid a... Bozo? Mean farewell to, yes, he was a bozo, to Jesse Helms, after we finish up Inside Broadway. We've just been Inside Broadway, thanks to TotalTheater.com and Performing Arts Insider. Whether you're at the very beginning, the middle, or the end of the Broadway season, everything you need to know about Broadway, off-Broadway, cabaret, opera, and dance is in the pages of Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine. Available 21 times a year or just in the monthly edition. Either way, Dave's Gone By listeners get 10% off. So subscribe now to Performing Arts Insider and find out all the information at PerformingArtsInsider.com. I'll make it easier for you. Hi, this is Karen Mason, and please come join me at Dave's Gone By on WGBB in Freeport. One, two, three. If Jesse don't like, it's probably not art. Jesse knows what good old Jesse is smart. And if you don't like that, don't feel sad. got a root. He took a red crayola and he drew a new. The teacher took a ruler to Jeffy's behind.
Well, Jackie probably didn't like Picasso. But neither did that big Kate and Frank. Oh, I don't know about art, but I got to take a hike. There are certainly no tears rolling down my face tonight for uh, the late Senator Jesse Helms, who died of all days on Independence Day, July 4th. And uh, he lived, unfortunately, to a ripe old age. Jesse Helms was born back in 1921, five-time Republican senator and major, major bitch. So absolutely no love, no respect, no just joy that Jesse Helms is finally dead. You know, ding, ding, dong, and goodbye to him. so mean. See, this is what I don't understand from you. We, we had this discussion in the pre-show. Uh, you don't want to malign someone or belittle them or besmirch them over their dead bodies. Why? This is a man who completely deserves to be vilified and have his corpse spat on. Well, he actually did did say he was wrong about the AIDS issue. He said he... he when? When he, did he say that? He did. Later on in his life, he said he was wrong about, you know, the AIDS research stuff and all that. And what about the racism stuff? He said he was wrong about that. that whole, yeah. Remember that Carolyn Mosley Braun thing? I'd forgotten yeah. about that. But he stood next to a black senator, where she was sen uh, yeah. senator too, in an elevator. And just to uh, either throw her off her game or make her uncomfortable, he whistled Dixie. Which is not just a song, and not just a southern song, but it has a certain level he of... literally whistled Dixie. That, that is like a middle-aged German humming Deutschland über alles next to a rabbi. That's, that's almost the equivalent yeah. of what he well, did. Well, he was nice, but, you know... No! He was pro-tobacco. That, that's who paid all his bills. That's who got him in. The cancer makers. So not only was he not saving lives by being against AIDS research and being anti-gay... But he was also killing people by supporting the whole tobacco lobby. He was also against Martin Luther King Day. He found reason, you know why? He was wrong a lot. He, he was wrong. Now, what was the reason he was against Martin? He couldn't say, well, because you know, we can't have a black man. Have a, no, it was because King had communist leanings. This <laughs> is his excuse. Well, his, his views were retarded. Yes. Yes, what did you call him? Well, not you, everybody called him. Senator No. That was, how would you like to be? That was his thing. It was Senator No. Like, this is a good thing. No to everything. Well, he voted against everything. Yeah. All I can say, and, and he suffered prostate cancer and bone disease, which I hope make him suffer terribly in his okay. final years. And yet, amazingly enough, he dies of natural causes. I don't know if there's a justice in the, this world for that. And you, <coughs> I just wish. But so did Liberace, remember? Yeah, well, yeah, but people love Liberace. Liberace brought joy to people. Liberace made people happy. People who didn't know his leanings, he made happy. People who would have protested his lifestyle, he made happy, and they, they closed their eyes. They didn't want to know. All they heard was the music. With Jesse Helms, all you hear is the crap. And I hope that's what he's buried in. <laughs> so goodbye, good riddance to Jesse Helms. And we're going to be saying goodbye to this episode of Dave's Gone By in, well, just like half a minute from now. Dave's gone by, 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 Yeah, well, Jesse's gone by, too. All things have to come to an end. It is 12.01 a.m. on WGBB Freeport here. Now it is, I guess, July 7th, the very beginnings of. The Gospel people are here, so we're going to run through this real quick to close this episode of Dave's Gone By, our 281st. Please let us know what you thought of the show by writing to us, Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. Let's remember, it's like my name, Dave. Dave's Gone By at AOL.com. Dot com, and also find out more about the program at davesgongby.org. 
R G. We also want to thank so much our sponsors that Jeff is going to be kind enough to run down for us. Well, of course, there's the copy gangs of Broadway, Hewlett Miniman Press. And then <coughs> there is the Bible Bro of Broadway. Performing Arts Insider Theater Magazine. You forgot? You no. forgot the name of So what are you waiting? I'm trying to put a CD in the CD player here. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, the Bible and of Broadway. And there is the best party planning on the face of the earth. Which is? Fancy Schmancy Balloons and Party Decor. What's the number for Fancy Schmancy? That would be 516-797-3229. Again. 516-797-3229. Now, we want to remind everybody to the watch... Best party Decor on Earth. We want to remind everybody to watch Shalom Dammit, Rabbi Saul Solomon's what piece. What is happening? Love and Acid Reflux Hour. It airs twice a week, Wednesday and Friday mornings on Long Island Cablevision Channel 115. And also, it and airs... You never get tired of the same 10 episodes. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, because maybe you missed them or, or you know, a couple you of weeks You just want to see them over and over and over again. Well, that you can do on YouTube.com. All the episodes are available oh. anytime on YouTube. Or, remember that Sunday afternoons at 1.30 p.m., they're on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. So all the people who can't see them on Long Island, it's on MNN, their station, Channel 67, on Manhattan Cable, and also MNN.org, Sundays at 1.30. And if they're elsewhere, they can just go to YouTube. Go to YouTube.com. Now, reminders that you can hear 25 older episodes of this episode show both at so actually how can we now. do that two different ways oh you can God. hear the most recent episodes at the radio station's website am1240wgbb.com in their archive section exciting or 25 vintage episodes from like 2003 are available by going to dave's gone by that would be dj episodes was it be what? before jeff Oh uh, well, no, you were on a couple of them even back then. Really? The guest, yeah. yeah. So there weren't there were no DJs back then. Yes, I'll have to remember those initials for when we're not in gospel hour. Um, <laughs> some jokes I won't make right now. Uh, let's thank see. You, Dave, and thank you for all the gospel listeners out there. <laughs> and look for Filler Up. That's a music show that I host once or twice a week here on the station. They pop it around at different times on the schedule. Go to the WGBB website to find out more about Filler Up on the schedule it's here. It's the music show. A couple of quick plugs. Robert Calfin is directing Marie Antoinette, The Color of Flesh, at the St. Luke's Theater off-Broadway. It's in an open run, so go check it out. It's supposed to be very, very good. Don't Ma lose your head over it. <laughs> well, let them, let them eat theater. Marie Antoinette, The Color of Flesh, at the St. Luke's Theater. Reminded you earlier that TJ and Dave are going to be at uh, the Barrow Street Theater at the end of July Run also. Man. And Karen Mason is currently in Hairspray, so go see her. And I think she mentioned she's also going to be doing a cabaret thing in early August at Birdland. So check out all things she's Karen Mason. Go see her in Hairspray. Thank her very, very much for being in the neighborhood tonight. Thanks yeah. also to Dave Gallagher of Pinnacle Productions for setting that up. I want to thank Jeb Goodman for being uh, with us. Well, you're always welcome, Dave. I want to give a shout-out to my wife's Aunt Helen, and I uh, hope that she's doing okay. Want hey, to Helen, how you doing? And to my Aunt Esther for the delicious... Hey, Esther, yes, how are you? For the barbecue, which I ended up barbecuing, so I got... Can I thank the Lulonics for inviting me to their barbecue? Go ahead, Jeff. I just did. You just did, all right. Anybody else you want to thank her or... Uh... Yeah. No, not really. Okay. Thank you to my mom and dad. Always good to see them. And thanks to my wonderful, adorable, and beloved and great wife, Joyce. She's lovely. In the weeks ahead... She's not pregnant, though. No, she's not. No, she... Well, no, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a comic answer to your inane comment about that every week, which is still not funny, but I can't, so... Well, we'll at least we didn't play the wailing song. Oh, I forgot the wailing song about the sperm. Oh, well. Next week. I'll have that. Next week, uh, come, still not figured out what we're going to have, but it'll be something cool. It's either going to be pianist and author Sarah Sion, who's very, very fun. She'll be talking to the rabbi. We also have John Balby, Dr. Dirty, something of a legend around these parts. And pet health expert Tom Soames is going to talk to my dog. Interesting stuff. But right now, that's the end of this particular episode of Dave's Gone By. Time to leave the neighborhood, but I will be back next Sunday, July 13th, 2008, with the 282nd episode of Dave's Gone By. Until then, don't miss your days going by. This is Dave Lefkowitz. And Jeff Goodman. Wishing you good night. 
masonry and masonic handshakes, and gone by. When trumpets were mellow, and every guy only had one fellow, no need to remember when, cause everything moved it new again. Dancing at your Long Island Jazz Eight party, waiter, brings four Bacardis, we'll order now what they ordered then, cause Your tap shoes and tails Let's go backwards when forward fails And movie stars you thought were long dead Now are framed beside your bed I don't throw the past away You might need a summer rainy day Dreams can come true again When everything old is new again Your tap shoes and tape Let's go backwards when all else fails Leave Red Garb alone And be a movie star on your own Don't throw the past away You might need a summer rainy day Dreams can come true again Of all 